Good evening everyone and welcome back to Joe's Healthy Cupboard. I hope you're all having an amazing week. And um, This evening I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the marathon which I am running in two days. Um, it may be one day by the time you watch this and also to discuss a little bit about the charity that I'm supporting as part of my run. So originally I started training for this thinking I'm just going to run a marathon and I'm doing it for myself. But then as I went on with my training and I spoke to Abby, who is a friend of mine, about their, the need for her charity, Miscarriage Information and Support Services, to raise funds in order for it to keep running for another year, I decided, actually, I'm going to um, run this marathon and ask for sponsorship to help support Miss. Um, and the reason for that was because it is a charity that I believe is really important. It raises awareness about miscarriage and provides support for women and their partners who have experienced miscarriages and because that's something that I myself have experienced I felt like close to the charity and it would have been beneficial for me at the time so that is who I am um, supporting and running for and I just wanted to have a little chat about that. So um, I'm just going to introduce you all to Abby or she can maybe introduce Hi. herself mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll just explain how we met. So Abby and I met through a mutual friend um, at a ladies pamper afternoon mm -hmm. um, and Abby had her little girl there and we just got chatting and then after she left I can't remember if um, Danny had told me that you ran a charity or if I'd yeah. probably mm -hmm. looked up on Facebook and yeah. seen um, and I realised that it was a miscarriage support mm -hmm. um, group I said charity I mean group at this moment but mm -hmm. it will be a charity yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah so I just reached out to Abby because basically I had had experiences of miscarriage and I saw that you'd started the group and yeah. I was interested in what she was doing. So um, we've obviously chatted a lot since then and I decided with the marathon that I wanted to support mm -hmm. Miss. Um, so maybe do you want to introduce yeah. yourself? And Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm Abby and I run a support group called Miss and it stands for Miscarriage Information Support Service. So the group is a monthly support group which is held at Dainsley Community Centre in Aberdeen and it is for women and partners who have suffered a miscarriage. It is. Um, the idea of the group is just basically for any members to come along and so that they can feel that they have support and somewhere that they can go to where other, um, other people have experienced similar they have. Um, so I started the group in March of last year and one of the main reasons why I started it was because I had a miscarriage three years ago and I was seven weeks pregnant at the time um, and I felt that there wasn't a lot of support or um, many people that I could turn to about when, I, when I'd suffered the miscarriage. So I think as a lot of people, a lot of women and partners do, that they, when they've had a miscarriage they, they kind of keep it very close to themselves, mm -hmm. they don't want to talk about it much. Um, and that was the one I think that's that's how, how like mental health can be quite a big issue I think it can be because they bottle your emotions and you don't talk about it I think that can make it quite serious so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start the group because I thought I don't want other people going through similar experiences and I want them to feel that there's other people around in, in the area in the local area that are going through similar and they have somewhere to turn to mm -hmm. that they can speak to and um, yeah, so in terms of what happened to me, it was just before 12 weeks as well. So I think I felt like, because you hadn't really told that many people that you were pregnant yet, other than like your closest family and friends, mm -hmm. that you it was so difficult to like then tell people that you'd had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, and I was similar as well, that I actually told people, I found out quite early on, like after a couple of weeks when I was pregnant, and I just I wanted to tell everyone. I was, yeah. I was so excited, and I told all my family and friends, and I thought and I was on Facebook and everything. Because I didn't think I I didn't really agree with the twelve week mark. Yeah. But you know that I know that's like a lot of people like oh, a lot of the medical professionals say that's like your safe zone. But I was just I was too excited. I just wanted to tell people, and I think it I don't know if it made it harder or not because I'd already told people, and then I had to then tell people that I had a miscarriage, mm -hmm. or perhaps. It would have been easier, perhaps, maybe not saying anything that I wouldn't have had to tell anyone that I had a miscarriage. I don't know. I think it's. I think either way, it's it's very difficult. I think it is whichever way that you're approaching it. I think, but um, yeah, like I said, I I told everyone I did, <laughs> and then I had to kind of go through the. I think I 
I, I find that very difficult because it was how to start off. Yeah. You're like, not going to announce that on Facebook well, like you did with the exactly, pregnancy. Well, that's it. Is. Exactly. And I think that it was just like a lot of folk after a couple of months, they're like, oh, how are you getting with your pregnancy? And it was really difficult that because I didn't want to then say, I didn't want them to feel guilty yeah. by asking, but then I also wanted to say, but I have to tell them, obviously, because they're asking me how things are. So I did find it quite difficult, but I think that I mean, I had quite a lot of family and friends who you know, who gave like quite a bit of advice they did and some of them actually came out and said, oh, I've had a miscarriage too. So, and that's something that I really appreciated that people being so open about it. Yeah. I mean, the subject of miscarriage, I do believe is a very close subject. Not a lot of people want to yeah, talk definitely. about it. You know, because I think they, they feel that they've done something wrong, that their bodies are not capable of mm -hmm. having a child. I think that's a big part of it, why people don't want to talk about it, which I, I completely understand, but I think it's important for people to know that it's not their fault. Yeah, absolutely. And that they shouldn't be ashamed of what they've gone through. And the Terrors of Tommies, they produced a statistic um, which stated that one in three women um, are likely to have a miscarriage. And, you know, it's a high number, so that, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very likely that, you know, your friends and your family have gone through similar, but perhaps they Thank haven't, you. they just don't want to say, which is completely fine that is, but I also think that it's really important to speak about it with one another, yeah. and I think that really does help. I think it does, and that's the idea with the group, is that, you know, I say to members, you don't need to talk about it, I don't want you to feel forced in to, to talk about your experience, but I think knowing in when you're in the room um, that everyone is going through effects something very similar, I think that makes you feel a lot better and a lot more comfort in that. Yeah. I think for me what was quite hard was the fact that I had had my son prior to that mm -hmm. um, and mentally what I found quite difficult was that I just assumed because it was so easy with him mm -hmm. and I just like you, I didn't tell lots of people but I told my mum and dad immediately because you know, just it was the it. same thing. I yeah. thought, well, mm -hmm. this is going to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So it kind of came as a shock because it was like 11 and a half weeks and I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. And then because I already had a child, I think I felt double guilt. Like I couldn't make a big deal out of it because, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I've already got a child yeah. and people mm -hmm. would, that sounds so yeah. stupid, no, but it's but just it's like, true. it's the kind of thing you feel like yeah. mm -hmm. um, that there's people who haven't got a child that have mm -hmm. had a miscarriage. But you've already got one, so... Yeah, that's right. No, and there's, there's a lot of members that do say that, that they've had, perhaps they have two children, and now and then they have three or four miscarriages, and they feel guilty that they shouldn't speak about it because they, you know, they should feel lucky that they have that child, but then they want more. So, yeah. And it's normal, it's just a normal feeling, it's, it's very natural, you know, and I think that's why it's really important to talk about it and express yeah. your emotions and how you feel. Definitely. And um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say, so the types of people that go to the group for support, is it like, uh, like usually immediately when, you know, the, the miscarriage happens or do people still come quite a bit afterwards? Yeah, it, it varies. So some of the members that we have, they've been for a couple of weeks, they have been. Um, some, like for example, they've just had the, the miscarriage a couple of months ago and then they just come for two or three sessions. There's other members that we've had that have come you know, straight from all the all, all the whole year they have done since March of last year, which is which is really good because I think they've then met a network of friends mm -hmm. they have done and they have a really good connection with them and you know that I know that some of them they actually meet up with the group the support group they do and just have a general coffee and go shopping that which is really nice that they then met someone that way which I think and they can speak about it as well which is really really important so. Yeah, I think as well what I thought was great about your group was because it was probably like more than a year after my first experience that I I didn't really feel like I necessarily needed to go to the group at the time but mm -hmm. I, I used I liked the Facebook group because yeah. you I I trusted and knew it was safe and the other people in there were had gone through similar things. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to have that kind of even just, you know, conversation if, if you needed yeah. to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean I always say to members that, you know, whether you've had the miscarriage or the loss the last couple of weeks or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. They're always welcome. They are, and um, you know I think it's really important that there's always a, a group there. And it isn't, you know, you don't say you can only come these certain times or you have to have a membership. You know, it's I've always said that this group is a drop-in session. They can come in when they want to choose when it makes you feel most comfortable. You know, I mean, what we try to do now is with our, our new members that come along because I know it can be a really daunting experience of going to a group and especially with the topic as well. Is that I'll meet them outside the centre and I'll come in with them I will mm -hmm. do and just make them feel a little bit more like. Comfortable a little yeah. bit more because I know it can be really difficult and 
I, th I think even just you know just going to an average group just now like normally I think that's it's a bit scary. It's, it's a bit scary. scary. And you're a bit anxious because you're thinking, <laughs> oh, I don't know anyone in the group. Everyone maybe knows each other, and so I always say I'll meet you beforehand. You know, exchange numbers and that kind of thing, just so it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. I do, and you know, I think that's really important, especially for the top end of the group. Mm -hmm. I think. And then just so people know how important this group is, um, because maybe people assume that there is support for this, mm -hmm. but I know for me, no one said to me there's a group where there's any form of support afterwards. And um, we were talking earlier that this is the only support group in the yeah, northeast of Scotland. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there are organisations out there like the Miss Cars Association based in England, um, but they are mainly, mainly for over the phone support, they are, or Facebook support. There's not, in Scotland, there's not as such like a, a support group where they meet face to face. There isn't. And, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to start the group because I felt that, you know, it's great to have over the phone and online support. But I think meeting and mm -hmm. actually going, getting out of the house, putting the fresh pair of clothes on, having a shower, I think that really does help. And, you know, as well as that with the, the group itself, that you are meeting new members, but we also have an activity and a speaker. So you are learning like a new activity, like, you know, like a new skill, for example, like with activities, mm -hmm. you know, we, we range from painting chairs, um, do yoga, for example, and th these are all, maybe they're not quite for you, maybe you're not into yoga and going hum and all that kind of <laughs> stuff, perhaps, but it helps, know, it helps, you know, and it might be something that you might want to try and like try with your partner at home, perhaps, you know, which is really good, and with the speakers, the speakers are there more just for, for information for you, to give you information and, ask, and for you to ask questions, so previously for speakers we've had midwives um, from maternity hospital, um, last month we just had ROC clinic in West Hill, and um, we had a couple of doctors from there speaking and it was really good to get them involved because I think the members had they've got so many questions after their experience yeah. that I think they're like I mean I know myself that when I went for the experience it was just I had I didn't have any words so I was kind of yeah. numb really from like my emotions so I think having that support and being able to ask questions a few months after in the group perhaps really helps them kind of ease their mind and any questions they may have yeah and I don't know about you, but you're talking about the activity and I think that's really important because for me, I think probably part of my kind of feeling good afterwards was that I had my running mm -hmm. and that probably connects it back to why, like, I think it's important for me to support Miss because mm -hmm. after that happened to me, I did actually like set myself running challenges mm -hmm. and I'm not saying like, you know, mm -hmm. it took a while to like yeah. get back into things, but that really having that kind of activity motivation. and motivation yeah. mm -hmm. and, and I think for other people maybe they don't necessarily have something automatically yeah. that this can introduce yeah, them to. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's that's another reason with the activities that as much as it's great in the group itself, that they can speak to one another. It's a bit of an icebreaker as well with the members. They can learn new skills, but then it's also something that they can do out with the group, you know, because it's a monthly group. So I always, I always think that okay, you've got your group and perhaps you've, you've opened out a little bit, but what happens after that group? I think it's really important mm -hmm. that you have like an activity or something that you've learned from the group that you can carry on within that month to make yourself feel a little bit better if you've perhaps had a bit of a down day. And you also mentioned that there's like a WhatsApp group as yeah, well for people to... That's right. So um, we have a, a private WhatsApp group. We've got about t only 10 members now, so it's quite small, but it's growing, growing quickly it is, which is great. And... Um, we also have a private Facebook group page as well and and that's um, really so we have the main Facebook page which is more for like research and articles and events which, which um, everyone can, can view and then we've got the private Facebook group page which is more for individuals that have any questions mm -hmm. they can do and you know if they're just wanting a little bit of support from other members and just to say, you know, I'm here, is anyone awake or something? You know, that I think I've had a couple that have been messaging at 2-3 in the morning and I think they feel a bit more comfort that there's someone, other people that are going through similar at the same time as well and experience similar. Yeah, absolutely. And um, in terms of the, just to kind of highlight what, like to me it seems like a very small running cost to keep the group going mm -hmm. and um, I really wanted to help with the marathon by helping you to keep that going for another year so maybe you just want to say a little bit about um you know what we're aiming to raise and yeah well first of all i really appreciate you supporting this it's, it's really really appreciated and so far we've raised i think it's approximately 190 on, on the just giving crowdfunding page which is amazing thank you very much for your support <laughs> so far um our aim is to try and well our aim for the year is to raise 1400 as that's what we need for, to have for the continued running of the group 
and that goes towards venue hire, refreshments, marketing materials and just building awareness around the city and around the area. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've had um, two years of funding which goes up until summer of this year so after that is that's when it gets a little bit scary because we yeah. kind of think we re I really want to continue on with the group but then I've also got to bear in mind thinking that we have these costs as well to, 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 to have and I want to make sure that the group is free for members to attend as well so if you are able to give a little donation that would be amazing yes. you know no matter how small even if it is a pound or two that's totally fine you know yeah. but it is really appreciated and uh, thank you very much for helping. And I think from my perspective, thank you so much to everyone who's already donated. Um, we're going to share a link to the Just Giving page below. And, you know, even if you're able to give up like a coffee for the week um, and donate a couple of pounds, then that would be so appreciated. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.